Baldwin, can you provide any comment? Journalism. Right it's time for you guys to start being journalists. That is Andrew Baldwin. He's the attorney for this man, the accused Delphi killer, Richard Allen. He's off the case. He doesn't want to be off the case. He wants to represent Richard Allen. Richard Allen wants him to represent him. And the judge says no, but now it's up in the Supreme Court of Indiana. This case is a mess, the Delphi murders. First of all, it went unsolved for five years. I believe, based upon the information they got almost immediately, it could have been solved very, very quickly. But somehow, some way, the left foot wasn't talking to the right foot, and there was no master list of the people that were actually there who looked like the guy in the video. It, uh, unbelievable. But now there's more developments. So... Richard Allen, from the beginning, has been complaining about um, his treatment while incarcerated, waiting for his trial, saying he's been the victim of uh, Odinists, Odinist prison guards who have been threatening him and beating him, etc. And now he's got um, someone on his side writing letters uh, on his behalf um, who says he's also being harmed by these prison guards. This is a fellow inmate. He's a child molester, convicted, serving 40 years. And he writes, I was housed in cell A2206, just above Richard Allen's cell A1107, due to being a voice on how Richard Allen was being mistreated by corrupt sergeants. Security cameras will show Sergeant Blank slamming to the floor and violently breaking my foot and ankle and the intimidating and intimidating the nurse not to treat my injuries. Sergeant Blank and officers to hold me while Officer Blank violently punched me in the ribs and stomach while Officer Mr. Blank kneed me in the face. I was stripped, uh, I, was, I was placed on strip cell and my personal property was taken. When I eventually received my property back, my legal documents were dis either destroyed or lost or taken due to incriminating recorded dates and times. Some of those recorded dates and times concern how Richard M. Allen was being abused and mistreated by staff and officers. Again, I have witnessed Richard Allen being abused and mistreated. I, Robert Baston, asked this court to report this corruption to the proper authorities to investigate. Wow. So you see where this is going. It's tough, though, when you have a convicted child molester, you know, trying to speak up on your behalf. Credibility issues all over the place. But... Um, Matt Johnson, Court TV crime and justice correspondent, went back to the scene. Now that we have all this information that has come out through some of the papers that have been filed, because things have been sealed for years, um, Matt Johnson takes us back to the scene to retrace some of the steps so we get a better perspective on uh, what happened and where Abby and Libby were and where the killer was the day of the murders. We're here in Delphi, Indiana, a town of about 3,000 people. It is the town seat of Carroll County. And we're going to take you on the trail, on the Monon High Bridge Trail that Libby and Abby took in 2017 and how they made it to the bridge. That's not this bridge. This is Freedom Bridge, also mentioned in court documents. So where they started that day, that's a little bit up the road. Across from Mears Farms is what's called Mears Entrance, according to court documents. And it would have been the main entrance in 2017. This fence wouldn't have been here. This is where Kelsey said that she dropped off Libby and Abby on February 13th that year. She would have waved goodbye, said that she loved them, and then watched them walk past those trees. And once Libby and Abby cleared the trees, they had a choice to make. Right here in the center of the trail, they could choose to go right and go towards town, or they could choose to go left towards the bridge. They went left. This is also where three girls say that they ran into a man generally matching the suspect description. He was heading towards the bridge. They were heading the opposite direction towards town. You know, walking along the trail, you realize that there are a lot of places that someone could hide. Yes, it was a different season. This happened in February of 2017. So there wouldn't have been leaves on the trees, but there are a lot of trees and it would have been very dense. According to court documents at around two o'clock that same day, a witness said she saw a man on the bridge standing about 50 feet up, but he looked very different according to her account looked boyish, young, 20s, maybe 30s, no facial hair, and brown curly hair or poofy hair. And that's what led to the second sketch. 
So we're at about the halfway point of the Monon High Bridge here behind me in Delphi, Indiana. You can see I'm standing on a part that is rebuilt, looks completely different than the area that leads over to private property. About this area right here, that's where that Snapchat photo was taken, where Libby takes a picture of her friend Abby. The two girls, they were heading down the bridge south over to private property, and that's where the abduction happened. All right, take a look. We've got a deadline for the closed door hearing transcript on November 27th. That's the hearing where the attorneys for Richard Allen say that they were persuaded to be uh, to take themselves off the case and, and threatened perhaps by the judge. So that's a big, big hearing. The trial now has a brand new date. It was supposed to be in January. Now it is in October of 2024. Um, but there's still, I think, a bit of a question of who is going to represent Richard Allen. He has new attorneys, but his former attorneys want in, and he wants his former attorneys in the case. Let's bring back in our think tank, Eckler Mercy, Bernarda Villalona, Eric Bland with us. Um, Bernarda, this, let's start with the, the fact of this alleged abuse that is taking place inside the prison that Richard Allen alleges and that this uh, fellow inmate, because he's being held in a prison, not in a jail, in an actual prison. So in there is a convicted child molester who says, oh yeah, it was definitely happening. Um, what are your thoughts about those allegations and what may or may not be happening to Richard Allen behind bars? And can we ever believe a convicted child molester? Well, it's going to be hard to prove that he is being assaulted inside of the jail. You got to think, first off, the majority of these jails, they have cameras inside of the jails. So where's the corroboration? Is there video evidence? Is there corroboration in the sense of are there any physical injuries on top of this man? Is there anything that he reported when he went to medical? So aside from the word of a convicted child molester, it'll be very difficult for those claims to go anywhere. Eklund Mercy, what do you think about the fact that Richard Allen had two attorneys <laughs> vigorous, vigorous defense. The prosecutor makes a motion saying that they are incompetent counsel. They should be taken off the case. The judge agrees and the judge persuades them and maybe threatens them depending, we don't know what, what exactly happened there. Those are the allegations. And now they're off the case, but they want back on the case and he wants them back on the case. I, I, I've never seen anything quite like this before. I. It smells really bad. First of all, I can believe him um, getting abused. So because of the case and how high profile it is, one can assume that he wouldn't be placed in um, general population. So if you're not in general population, usually you are around child molesters and the only people that you have access to are the chef, you know, are our correction officers. So if he's saying that corrections officers are abusing him, also they all they are the ones who have access to the videos and things of that nature. So because of the fact that you're kicking off attorneys, we have prosecutors who are asking for attorneys to be put off. I've yet to see. I've never seen that. I've seen um, prosecutors. You know, we fight with attorneys or you tell the judge um, to get their act straight, but to completely um, take them off and all you have, like, it's it's weird to me. So because of all of it, the totality of the circumstances and the fact that you have a, defen a defense attorney who was brought on the case pro bono fighting to get back, it smells really bad, and I think that um, we're going to see a lot during this hearing. Eric, the thing that shocked me was is that this, these aggressive defense attorneys alleged a, a, a level of conspiracy in, in setting up their client, and then they get kicked off the case. I mean, to me, that just adds fuel to the conspiracy of what's going on here. Yeah, it is uh, troubling. I, you know, I certainly... Um, Ha, don't have empathy for a child molester and I don't have empathy for a murderer of children. You know, we all grew up, Vinny, in, in, I grew up in Philadelphia, New Jersey, and we used to leave the house at nine in the morning and not come home until six o'clock at night. You know, today we don't live in a world where that can be done and it's sad. But the fact of the matter is, 
uh, someone is entitled to the counsel of their choice, but they need competent counsel. In a case like this, it's a, a premeditated murder case. You want competent counsel. And if uh, these defense counsel are not in good faith and just launching firebombs and, and making bald, naked allegations that could taint the prosecution and give him uh, an ineffective assistance of counsel claim, a judge may have the right to raise these issues. And that's going to that's gonna have to play out in this hearing coming up on the 27th. I don't know the defense attorneys. They may be totally uh, competent and have tremendous amount of experience. But for a judge to do this, there has to be more than just uh, you know, uh, bombastic type of language that these defense attorneys were using. Yeah, and, and and I remember that famous case where the attorney fell asleep during the trial, and and that that conviction withstood appeal as well.